Hello there, and welcome to Veterans Medals Workshop, where today we're going to wind up our series on United States military medals from the revolution to the global war on terror. And you're right, this is a section on the last 25 years, the global war on terror. And as we wrap this particular episode up, I'd like to thank my staff, me, myself, and I, for all of the help on these productions, but most especially to thank you for watching and sending me the suggestions and comments to try to improve this channel. So, many thanks to you. <laughs> okay, now we got rid of the freeloaders. Let's take a quick overview of what we're going to do today. First, we're going to go back and take a look at the Kosovo Campaign Medal, and then take a little sidebar to take a look at the NATO medals authorized members of the Armed Forces, and then the establishment in 2001 of 9-11 of the National Defense Service Medal to every member of the armed forces coming on active duty, which makes it, well, the most awarded medal in United States Armed Forces history. Then the establishment of the Global War on Terror Expeditionary Medal, the Global War on Terror Service Medal. And then we'll take a look at the Afghanistan Campaign Medal, the Iraq Campaign Medal, the Inherent Resolve Campaign Medal, and we'll even touch on the Air and Space Campaign Medal. And I think you'll get a good idea on how these medals were awarded and for what service. And better than that, you'll get to see some fabulous examples of veterans of the armed forces and their service medals for this period, the last 25 years of service in the armed forces of the United States, or mainly the medals of the 21st century. Okay, come on, let's go. We're going to mainly concentrate on the National Defense Service Medal, the Kosovo Campaign Medal, the Afghanistan Campaign Medal, the Iraqi Campaign Medal, the Inherent Resolve Campaign Medal, the Global War on Terror Expeditionary Medal, the Global War on Terror Service Medal, and we'll take a look at the Air and the Space Campaign Medal and a couple of the NATO medals and all their ribbons. A quick review of the combat decorations are the three Medal of Honors stay the same as in the past. And in the, the key combat decorations for the last 25 years are shown here, starting on your upper left with the Army Distinguished Service Cross, the Navy Cross, the Air Force Cross, the Silver Star, the Legion of Merit, and the Distinguished Flying Cross. On the second row, the Bronze Star, Purple Heart, Air Medal, Army Commendation Medal, Navy and Marine Corps Accommodation Medal, and the Coast Guard Accommodation Medal. The Armed Forces Good Conduct Medals have stayed the same with the exception of a new Space Force Good Conduct, but we have a separate video on that. And if you want more information on the separate unit awards and their military equivalents, we have a separate video on that subject. And that brings us to the first of our new campaign medals for the 21st century, and that's the Kosovo Campaign Medal that was instituted in the year 2000. It was awarded for 30 consecutive days or 69 consecutive days for service in Kosovo, the former Yugoslavia, between 1999 and 2013. The medal is a circular bronze disc depicting rocky terrain, a fertile valley, and sunrise behind a mountain pass in Kosovo. Above is seen on two lines of the words, Kosovo Campaign, and at the lower edge is a stylized reef of grain reflecting the agricultural nature of the area. The reverse shows an outline of the province of Kosovo with the inscription in defense of humanity across the top. There have been at least two listed campaigns, so every medal would have at least one campaign star. 1998, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization began authorizing medals for NATO-specific service, and the NATO Kosovo Campaign Medal was issued by the United States Armed Forces for participation in the Kosovo operation. The U.S. Forces, the non-Article 5 Medal for the Balkan Service, replaced the NATO Kosovo Medal effective in January 2003. But we could spend hours on NATO medals. We have a separate video out on them, and I'll show you the ribbons to let you know the scope of it. As you can see here, there are a number of NATO ribbons, and the one thing about it is U.S. military personnel can be awarded more than one NATO medal, but they can only wear the original ribbon or medal and indicate an additional award with a bronze star. The bottom line of ribbons that you see show clasp, and that's how a lot of the European countries wear the ribbons. 
The latest award of a National Defense Service Medal was authorized for all U.S. service members on duty on or after September 11, 2001, up to 31 December 2022. Every member of the armed forces, as shown here, who had even one day of duty during that period, was authorized the National Defense Service Medal. So, for example, this young airman who came on active duty in 2002 and served 30 days in Kosovo would not only be awarded the National Defense Service Medal and the Kosovo Medal with at least one bronze star, but the NATO Medal for Kosovo. And it comes with a bar that says Kosovo, but the United States does not authorize the wear of the Kosovo bar on the Kosovo Medal. Up with all of this, you will find my new military ribbon guide for the Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, and Space Force. Every service's ribbons and devices, as well as United Nations ribbons and NATO ribbons. It's on Amazon, and it's a real deal. That brings us to our next medal, the Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal. It was authorized all of the services, and it's for deployment abroad for 30 days in support of the Global War on Terrorism Operations on or after 11. September 2001. And it does come with devices now to include bronze and silver stars and the arrowhead device. The metal itself is a circular bronze disc which displays a shield adapted from the Great Seal of the United States surmounting two sword kilts enclosed within a reef of laurel. Over all of this is an eagle with the wings displayed, grasping a serpent in its claws. You look in the medal, the original issue of the medal had the word medal on the back and was slightly larger than most campaign medals. It was restruck several years later to remove the word medal and to make the medal a little smaller. I think Medals of America still has some of the original medals available. Put a list down below of some of the 40 areas the medal could be earned in. The Global War on Terrorism Service Medal was authorized at the same time that the Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal was authorized, but the big difference is it was awarded for service of 30 days in support of a global war of terrorism operations in the United States or overseas after September 2001. And so almost every member of the armed forces receive that medal after 30 days service. The current version of the medal is shown on your left and it has an eagle with its wings spread holding an olive branch in the right claw and arrows in the left with a stylized globe behind it. The original issue of the medal had War on Terrorism Service medal, had the word medal, and was slightly larger than the current issue. Between September 2001 and September 2022, the Global War on Terror Service medal was awarded to almost every member of the armed forces who served 30 or more days on active duty. But now it has been made much more restrictive and is only awarded for at least 30 days service in an actual counterterrorism operation. So the soldier on your left who served in Kosovo before 2001 would have been authorized the three medals you see, while the Marine who served in Kosovo after 2001 would have been authorized four medals, the National Defense Service Medal, the Kosovo Medal, the Global War on Terror Service Medal, the NATO Kosovo Medal, but without the bar. Soldier's case shows an example of a member of the armed forces who served in Afghanistan before the establishment of the Afghanistan Campaign Medal. It has his decorations and then the Global War on Terror Expeditionary Medal to represent his service in Afghanistan, along with a couple of commemorative medals at the end. The Afghanistan Campaign Medal was instituted in 2004 for all of the services, but was backdated to 2001, and it was awarded for active participation in Operation Enduring Freedom, the liberation of Afghanistan. It can be awarded with the arrowhead device, bronze or silver stars, or the Eagle Globe and Anchor for naval personnel serving with Marines. Personnel who receive a Global War on Terror Expeditionary Medal prior to the institution of the Afghanistan Campaign Medal could apply to have it exchanged, but they could not keep both medals. Front of the medal, above a range of mountains, is a map of Afghanistan in the center with the inscription, Afghanistan Campaign, around the top. On the reverse side, on the top is a radiating demi-sun superimposed by an eagle's head. Inscribed across the bottom half of the reverse sides are three lines, 
or service in Afghanistan, all enclosed by a laurel wreath symbolizing victory. With five designated Afghanistan campaigns, and they went from 11 September 2001 until the unexpected order to withdraw by the president on August 2021. As I mentioned before 2004, the Global War on Terror Expeditionary Medal was awarded for service in Afghanistan. But but you could not have both medals for the same service. And as you see, this young airman has removed the Global War on Terror Expeditionary Medal. Starting on your left is a young Marine's display from service in Afghanistan. You'll notice he has the Purple Heart, the Afghanistan Campaign Medal with one star, Global War on Terror Service Medal, and his Armed Forces Reserve Medal with the M device to show he was mobilized. Next is an Army captain called up from the reserves. He has his decoration, his Afghanistan Campaign Medal, his Global War on Terror Service Medal, his Armed Forces Reserve Medal with M device for mobilization, and his NATO Medal for service in Afghanistan. In this airman's decoration, you can see that his Afghanistan medal goes before his Global War on Terror medals. Two displays are enormously interesting because they show how much of the armed forces are run by the non-commissioned officers. And the fact for Afghanistan, how many of them were called up or mobilized from the reserves. As you can see on both of these displays, the Armed Forces Reserve Medal with mobilization devices. The Iraq Campaign Medal was instituted in 2004 and backdated to cover a period from 2003 up to December 2011 and was awarded to all the members of the armed forces who actively participated in Operation Iraqi Freedom. It came with an arrowhead device, bronze and silver stars, and the Eagle Globe and anchor for naval personnel serving with Marines. The medal features a relief map of Iraq displaying two irregular lines representing the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers surmounting a palm reef. Above is the inscription, Iraq Campaign, and the Statue of Freedom is shown on the reverse, surmounting a sunburst encircled by two simicas, point down, crossed at the tip of the blade, all above the inscriptions for service in Iraq. There were seven campaigns for service in Iraq. We'll list them down below. The basic medals for service in Iraq are shown here, the National Defense Service Medal, the Iraq Campaign Medal with at least one bronze campaign star, and the Global War on Terror Service Medal. All young enlisted soldiers would finish their tour would have a display like this with the Good Conduct Medal, the National Defense Service Medal, the Iraq Campaign Medal, and the Global War on Terror Service Medal. Your left, this Marine veteran of the Liberation of Iraq shows his ribbon-only awards over his medals. On the right, this Air Force non-commissioned officer shows two campaign stars on his Iraq Liberation Medal. And note his Armed Forces Reserve Medal to indicate he's been mobilized multiple times. Times. This Marine Master Gunnery Sergeant's display is very interesting because it not only indicates his service in the liberation of Iraq, but if you'll look over on his Armed Forces Service Medal, you will see that he has been mobilized multiple times in support of Marine operations. It always amazes me the fascinating history that every veteran's display case tells. And in this display case of a Marine's veteran service in the liberation of Iraq, well, you can see his entire military history displayed, if you know how to read it, of course. I think these two displays do a great job of representing two Army veterans' service in the liberation of Iraq. On the left, the sergeant has his combat action badge over his decorations and service medals. And on the right, Specialist 4 displays his combat patches, his combat infantry badge, airborne badge, ribbon, and his medals showing two campaign stars on his liberation of Iraq medal. The Navy veteran on the left shows his Iraq service with his ribbons over his medals, while the corpsman on the right, his badge indicates that he served with the Marines in several different occasions to include expeditionary operations besides the liberation of Iraq. Retired Air Force non-commissioned officer has a very interesting case because not only does he have his decorations, but he's been awarded the Kosovo Medal for campaigns in the liberation of Iraq far right of his medals, you will see the NATO Kosovo medal, and he's kept his bar on there. The 21st century's been busy for our armed forces, and you can look at this display on the left of an Army staff sergeant, 
And you can see below his decorations the Kosovo medal on the bottom left, uh, liberation of Iraq, his Global War on Terror medals, and his NATO service medals. While the petty officer on the right shows campaign medals for both Afghanistan and the liberation of Iraq, with the medal in the bottom right-hand corner indicating service in Korea. And as you can see in this display case, it's not unusual for a member of the reserve forces to have served in both Afghanistan and Iraq. The latest major campaign medal is the Inherent Resolve Campaign Medal as awarded to all services. It was instituted in March of 2016 and is still awarded. However, it is much more restrictive, but it's awarded for active service in direct support of Operation Inherent Resolve, mainly in the area of Syria. The front of a medal features the scorpion, symbolic of treachery and destruction, and it's found on most of the major land masses in the Middle East. The dagger alludes to the swiftness and determination of U.S. forces. The eagle on the back represents the United States and is symbolic of might and victory. The Campaign and Service Medals of the 21st Century are shown here. The National Defense Service Medal, the Kosovo Campaign Medal, Afghanistan Campaign, Iraq Campaign, War on Terror Expeditionary Medal, the War on Terror Service Medal, and the Army Reserve Medal with the M device for mobilization, and the NATO medals. Brings us to the Air Force Air and Space Campaign Medal. It was instituted in 2002 for Air Force personnel, and it's backdated to 1999, but it's awarded for providing direct support of combat operations at home station or from outside the area of combat. Operations related to the global war on terrorism to include Iraq freedom and enduring freedom are not eligible for the Air Force Air and Space Campaign Medal. It is a bronze circle with an eagle clutching a shield on a backdrop of a stylized earth. This is our final show on the seven series of the Military Medals of the United States, beginning with the Revolution. To all of them is a trip through American military history for the last 235 years by taking a look at the military awards and service medals and campaign medals awarded our veterans. Thanks for watching today. If you haven't caught some of our other earlier series on the military medals of the United States from the revolution up to the global war on terror, please do. I think you'll enjoy them. And thanks again for your comments and your suggestions, your likes, and best of all, thanks for subscribing and keeping us on the air. See you next time on Veterans Medals Workshop. <music>